concept that this is healthcare economics. Health economics is a branch of economics concerned with efficiency, effectiveness, value, and behavior in the delivery and consumption of health and healthcare. Health spendings is the final consumption of health goods and services. It includes spending by both public and private forces. The United States spends more on healthcare than any other country in the world, and a large share of that spending comes from the federal government. In 2017, the United States spent about $3.5 trillion, or 18% of GDP, on health expenditures, more than twice the average among developed countries. Of that $3.5 trillion, almost half of it, $1.5 trillion, is directly or indirectly financed by the federal government. In other words, the federal government dedicates resources of nearly 8% of the economy toward health care. By 2028, we estimate this cost will rise to almost $3 trillion, or 9.7% of the economy. Over time, this cost will um, continue to grow and consume an increasing share of the federal resources. So, in other words, if we are spending the most of our healthcare um, system and the economics of our healthcare system must be the best, right? Um, not really so. According to experts of economics of our healthcare system, um, are actually horrifying. Sarah Collins, a uh, PhD, which is the vice president for healthcare coverage and access at the Commonwealth Fund, summarized our current environment pretty well when she stated, and I quote, we are seeing a perfect storm of negative economic trends threatening working families in the United States. While gas and food prices are increasing and home values are declining, the rise in health care costs is surpassing income growth and few people have adequate insurance. As a result of that, working people are struggling to pay their bills and they are accruing medical debt. End quote. So, unfortunately, we aren't getting healthier either. This trend has been well documented by numerous researchers, including the CDC, um, which noted that 6 in 10 adults have at least one chronic condition, and 4 in 10 adults have two or more. The CDC also estimates that 90% of the nation's $3.5 trillion in annual health care expenditures are for people with chronic and mental health conditions. Let's take a moment and stop this presentation to review the goals for this concept lecture. We'll start as usual with a definition. So, healthcare economics are defined as a behavioral science that addresses how to allocate limited resources among unlimited demands and how to pay for this. Resources. We'll look now into the scope of this concept. Healthcare economics represents the availability, or on the other hand, the scarcity of healthcare resources and financing or payment mechanisms in order to pay for these resources. Whether or not there is a payment influences the utilization of resources, regardless of the availability and distribution of healthcare. Therefore, healthcare economics and finance are twin sides of the same coin. If two things are two sides of the same coin, then they are very closely related, although they seem different. And they are also appropriately considered together. The delivery and financing of healthcare is highly influenced by government and public and private organizations because they can define and control the payment for healthcare services. So economic behavior in the healthcare marketplace is highly sensitive to the actions of all participants, leading to ongoing changes in healthcare goods and services, and as well, changes in their costs. According to Kaiser Family Foundation in 2019 Employer Benefit Survey, the average cost of an employer-sponsored health plan for a family of four in 2009 was almost 13500 with employee contribution accounting for about 3,500 of that cost. In 2019, the cost was over 
20,000, with employee contribution accounting for 6,000. So for the employees, almost double. This represents a greater than 50% increase in the total cost of the insurance over a 10-year period. As a result, employers are engaging in a massive cost shift, pushing more of the financial burden into their employees. And here are three key statistics demonstrating this fact. The average employee contribution for family co uh, coverage has increased by 71% since 2009. And on an average, employees now directly pay for 30% of the cost of their employer-sponsored health insurance, which is much higher if the company is a small one. The average annual deductible has increased 100% during the last 10 years. And those key statistics should cause a lot of concern. During the past decade, the average worker's contribution in the form of premiums, deductibles, and other out-of-pocket costs has increased over 50%, yet wages have on average increased only by 26%. This employer-to-employee -employee cost shift um, is placing more and more economic burden on individuals and families, and as a result of that, we see more and more consequences. As the population ages and per capita health care costs rises, nearly all forecasters expect federal health care spending to continue to grow. Based on Congressional Budget Office, CBO, projections and our own extrapolations, major federal health spending will rise from a little bit over 5% of GDP in 2017 to almost 7% in 2028 and over 8% by 2040. Clearly, this is not a sustainable situation. An important theoretical link is to this concept of healthcare economics is the risk. And risk represents the uncertainty or unpredictability of a loss, for example. The loss of a home due to a fire um, or other reasons. Typical health care risks are generally related to the debilitating effects of a serious health condition and their effect on an individual's or family's quality of life. And I'll give an example. If the health of one of the income earners in the household deteriorates, there is likely to be a loss of income to sustain the family. Health insurance mediates this risk uh, by transferring the risk to an insurance company in a contractual agreement between the insured and the company. In the case of a loss, the insurance company compensates the insured for their loss. Nursing is the largest segment of the nation's healthcare workforce. With more than 3 million members who often provide the largest bulk of patient care, nurses can play a vital role in helping realize the objectives set forth in the 2010 Affordable Care Act, the legislation that represents the broadest health care overhaul since the 1965 creation of the Medicare and Medicaid programs. Working together with government, businesses, healthcare organizations, professional associations, and the insurance industry, nurses can play a vital role in ensuring that health care is equitable and accessible to all and leads to an improved healthcare outcome. Nurses will experience almost daily a constant concern for achieving efficiencies in practice, reducing unnecessary waste, and working together to reduce the costs of care. In addition, as healthcare consumers themselves, nurses will have to make choices and trade off about the resources they use to keep themselves and their families healthy. Pay for performance concept is designed to enhance the communication and coordination of care among patients, providers, and clinicians, including nurses, by offering additional reimbursement to clinicians and hospitals for the provision of healthcare services considered appropriate and of high, of high quality. This will ensure that patients receive important care that may not have been prioritized before the program's existence. More than half of commercial health maintenance organizations, HMOs, use pay for performance and recent legislation requires the CMS to adopt this approach for Medicare. Many current pay for performance programs offer rewards for high relative performance, being among the top, let's say, 10% of physicians, 
rather than absolute performance. Rewarding only the top providers creates competition and can stretch a small bonus pool. On the other hand, competition may limit collaboration and sharing of best practices and may create or sustain quality gaps between high and low performing providers. Nurses are indirectly part of pay for performance with new Medicare reimbursement guidelines. Currently, Medicare will not cover the cost of preventable hospital acquired conditions, mistakes, and infections that can occur during a patient's hospitalization. For example, if a patient admitted to a hospital develops a pressure ulcer during his or her hospital stay, Medicare will not pay for the extended admission related to acquiring the pressure ulcer. Other nurse sensitive indicators included in Medicare's new ruling are falls from bed, uh, catheter associated urinary tract infections, uh, blood incompatibility, incompatibility mistakes, and vascular catheter associated infections. This is placing an additional financial burden on hospitals because nurses need the time to assess all of these indicators on an ongoing basis, and hospitals must code for infections and other conditions as present on admission, so they are not liable for a reduction in their payment. Therefore, staff nurses have the ability to contribute to the organization's effort to achieve pay for performance standards, including education, documentation, team collaboration, and patterns of care. So health economics is a concept that represents um, areas that um, will interrelate um, with several other, several other concepts throughout your um, discussions in class you saw that they uh, several other concepts will are um, interrelated with the healthcare economics health policy is used to provide um, overreaching goals and to set priorities and values for the allocation of health resources Healthcare quality is concerned with issues related to ensuring standards of care and outcomes um, that are achieved in the delivery of healthcare. Uh, healthcare organizations will provide the framework uh, for delivery of healthcare, while care coordination involves the marshalling of personnel and other resources needed to carry out all required patient care activities. Healthcare law affects healthcare economics because it governs the insurance industry and it is illustrated in the application of healthcare funding and reform. You can observe here a few of the um, exemplars and I would like you to go back to your book and answer the following questions. Who does Medicaid cover? What is SCHIP? What are Medicare organizations? Who is covered by Medicare? What is the difference between Medicare Part A, B, C, and D? Question number one. What is the primary source of insurance in the United States? One, federal government. Two, employer-sponsored. Three, private pay. Or four, State or government. Correct answer is number two, employer sponsored. In contrast to most other nations, when where the government finances health care for the majority of its residents, private employer sponsored insurance is the primary source of insurance in the United States. Question number two. According to the law of supply and demand, if the price of an item decreases, what happens to the demand? One, increases. Two, decreases. Three, remains the same. Or four, depends on the economy. The correct answer is number one. The law of demand states that when the price of an item is reduced, the demand for it increases. This means there is a balance that as the price increases, demand decreases and vice versa. Question number three. 
what is the target on the bull side for the concept of healthcare economics? One, value. Two, efficiency. Three, cost effectiveness. Four, supply and demand. Correct answer is answer three. The interrelationship of how the attributes build on one another is represented as a bullseye because of the target for the concept of healthcare economics is to have cost-effective care.